Greetings everyone, my name is Michael McCann and welcome to this Wayward Art Company video on adding roots to your tree models in Blender. We're going to be using the sapling tree generator for this, so if you don't have that enabled, go to edit and then choose preferences and then click on add-ons. And in the search field, just start typing sapling and you'll have it here. So just make sure that this box is checked and now that add-on should be enabled. So if we type Shift A and go to Curve and then choose here at the bottom the Sapling Tree Generator, uh, by default you see that it adds this tree which we're not going to use. And there are a lot of settings here that we could use to change it, but instead I'm going to use a preset. So I'm going to come down to Load Presets and choose Japanese Maple. And right now it's very elaborate. You may want to simplify this with some of these settings, um, but I'm just going to leave it like this. I, I kind of want this very extravagant looking uh, tree roots for this tree. So if we tap into edit mode, we can see that this is not a mesh. It's actually a curve object. So we have all of these handles. And what I want to do is select this handle at the very bottom, right at the 3D cursor, and type Control H and then choose Hook to New Object. This adds a hook modifier to the tree and an empty object which will control it. So just by selecting the empty object and moving it around, I can change the position of the, the base of that tree. And the hook modifier is very useful. In this instance, we could again select the object and move the base of the tree, or we could select the tree and move it, but keep the base at the 3D cursor. So very handy. Okay, so let's start making these tree roots. I'm going to select the empty end of the tree and rotate it 180 degrees so that it's upside down. So here it's 180 degrees. Um, and now we need to add a new tree. So we'll type Shift A and go to Curve and then add Sapling Tree Generator. And I'm going to select the same preset as before, the Japanese Maple. And I don't want it to look exactly like the one we added for the tree root, so I can use the random seed to generate a, a different uh, tree model. And I think that one looks pretty good. Now there are a few settings in this add-on that I like to change whenever I am creating trees. So we can switch from the geometry window to the, let's go to leaves. And let's click the show leaves box so that we can actually see them in the viewport. And by default, the leaves only grow from the tips of the branch. That's noted here if we hover over the leaves amount. It says maximum number of leaves per branch, negative values grow leaves from branch tip. So if we were to take this from a negative value to a positive value, we'll start to see the leaves grow along the branches themselves, which in most cases isn't very natural looking. I do think that there are too many leaves at the end of each tip, so I'm going to switch this to negative four. Now there are four individual leaves at the end of each branch. I also want to switch the leaf shape from hexagonal to rectangular, but I do think that they look a little too thin right now. So we have these four leaf scale options here. If I use the top right option, I can slide this forward to make the leaves a little uh, wider. And I can also increase the overall scale here with this first option. So I'll switch it to a maybe a point, point 0.3. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I want to do a few more things to make these leaves look a little more natural. First of all, I think that they're too straight. So I want to give them the appearance that they have some weight so that they're curving downward. So if I take the leaf angle further in the negative value, I can start to bend the leaves downward. Okay, and I can also uh, increase the random scale of the leaves. So let's just zoom in. And this bottom right option for the leaf scales will just give a random scale value to all of these leaves. And the tree looks still pretty bare but we will be adding some more leaves and geometry to it to make it look more full. Uh, before doing that though, I'm going to make a few other changes. If I switch from leaves to branch growth, I can come down under vertical attraction and take this first slider down into a negative value. This bends all of the branches downwards and makes the tree appear to be a bit more wide. 
And so now the final step is to just make more branches, essentially. So if we go to branch splitting, uh, we can use this levels to add more branches and leaves. And I, I do this last because once we do this, things will slow down considerably in the viewport. So if I increase the levels to three, it's already starting to look a lot nicer. Let's increase it to four. And it struggled a little there, but now this looks a lot more realistic. And there's maybe a few more things that we could do, but I think that this is going to be fine for this demonstration. But it's important to make sure that you have all the settings the way that you want them, because as soon as you select your tree, you're going to lose all of the options that you had for that add-on. So now we need to actually work on parenting. Now, by default, the leaves are already parented to the tree, which is great. But we need to parent the tree to the roots. So first make sure that only the tree is selected and not the leaves and then hold shift and then select the roots and then type control P and choose set parent to object. So now if we just select the roots and move it around, the tree and the leaves will both follow, but we have some weird things happening here with the empty. So if we select the empty and then shift select the roots, we can type control P again and then parent that to the object. Now just by moving the roots, everything else will move along with it. And we still can control the position of those roots with the empty. Next, you'll need some kind of a landscape to add your tree to. I already have a small plane with a subsurface modifier and a displacement modifier added to it. So this will be the landscape that I'm using. And in the object settings, I'm just going to change the name of this plane to landscape. And I'll select the tree roots and move the entire tree above it. My viewport is lagging a little, so I'm going to select the leaves and type H to hide them, and that way the viewport will speed up a little bit. Okay, so let's set up our tree roots now. First I'll select them and then come to the Modifiers tab. And we already have our hook modifier, so I'm going to click Add Modifier and choose Shrink Wrap. Now, nothing's happened because we haven't set a target yet. So under Target, just select the box and then choose Landscape. Now, this of course looks terrible, so we need to correct the way that they're being applied. The first thing that I can do is use these arrows to move it above the hook modifier. And that corrects the shape a little, but we need to adjust some of the settings in the shrink wrap modifier. So the first setting is under mode, we want to switch this from nearest surface point to project. Okay, and that moves the roots back to their original position. So the next setting is we need to select an axis. So here underneath of axis, we're going to check the Z box. Now we're going to deselect the positive box and then check the little negative box. And now if I just move the roots down, they will conform to the shape of the landscape. And regardless of where I position the tree, the roots will always stay on the ground. So you can, um, you can still make adjustments to your landscape and not have to do any more work with the modifiers. All right, so just a few more settings. Uh, we can adjust the resolution of these roots if we choose. So come over to the Curves tab. And we have the resolution here, which if your roots look a little too boxy, you can smooth them out. And it doesn't really matter how much geometry you choose to use here. What does matter, though, is if you're running vertical lines down or vertical edges, uh, which you would do here with the bevel resolution. I'm just going to add one more edge. Um, but if you do that, you need to do the same to the tree because they need the same amount of vertices to connect them. Because we will be connecting these two things and then converting it to an object. Now I'm just using the empty to rotate this around so that the edges line up as close as possible. Okay, that looks, that looks all right. Okay, so we're nearly done. So now I can select my roots and come over to the modifiers tab and then just apply both of these modifiers. So now we're ready to convert this to a mesh. There's one more thing we need to do. I'm going to type Alt-H to unhide the leaves. 
and I'm going to select them and then remove the parent. And I can do that by typing Alt P. And then if I choose clear parent, we'll run into an issue. So I'll just show you. If I select it, the leaves will actually change their position, which isn't great. So I'll take Control Z to undo that. And then Alt P again and choose clear and keep transformation. Okay, and that works a lot better. So now I'll select the tree and then shift select the roots and go up to object and then down to convert to and choose mesh from curve. And so now if I tab into edit mode, you can see that this is now a mesh, but it's still two objects. So we need to connect them. So I'll select both of them and then type control J, which makes them one object. We can also delete this empty object now that we don't need it anymore. So now with the tree selected, we can press tab to go into edit mode and we can start connecting some of these vertices. So we'll select these two and then type Alt M and then choose merge at center. And we're just going to do this all the way around. So the, the two pieces are completely connected. If you guys found this video useful, it helps a lot if you give the video a like because that helps other people on YouTube to find it. And also stick around to the end of this video, which we're nearly there. Um, uh, there's a short trailer for an add-on that I have available on the Blender market called Mask Tools. And it's an add-on that just simplifies the, the workflow for texturing in Blender. Uh, but I'll leave a link to that in the description. Thanks for watching, guys.